Hey guys, this is MTV Junkie. Today I'm going to be reviewing the 2018 Apollo Valier from Halfords in a size large. I bought this bike on offer around Christmas for about £150, but it's now on the Halfords website for £240. I'm sure that you can catch it on sale again at some point. Overall, my experience has been pretty good, but I'm going to get into the like the small technical details about this bike. It does only come in the color green, and there are three sizes. Both the front and rear are equipped with mechanical disc brakes. They're both made from the brand that's named Clarks. I haven't really heard of them before, but they are pretty good with a decent amount of bite. The brakes are pretty much always reliable and I'm still using the same brake pads from Christmas and they're still going pretty strong and working even on the more rooty descents. I've never really had an issue with them. Um, they have been sometimes where they overheat on like really downhills but most of the time it goes pretty good. Like for example, in this video you can see me going down on quite rooty terrain and to be honest I'm pretty confident with them. You do every now and then need to screw the caliper in so the braking power stays the same, but that's just due to general wear and tear from how you ride the bike I guess. But other than that, I'm, I'm pretty sure these are great brakes. Although you can upgrade if you want to. The wheels are made out of steel, so they're a bit on the heavier side. But on a positive note, you do get a pair of Kenda knobbly tyres that supply more than ample grip. Plus the 27.5 wheel size that you zip around a lot of XC trials. One thing I did notice though, I can't find these same Kenda tyres anywhere. So I think they may have been just a licensed out version. But even with a couple of months in, you can see that the wear on the tyres is basically minimal. The rear tyre has been affected a little bit worse, but you do get a lot of grip and they're pretty fast down trails. They've never really let me down. They have been punctured a couple of times, but I don't really run tubeless at all, so it hasn't been a big issue for me. I do actually run with muck in my tyres now, so it prepares punctures as I go along. Um, as you can see, the drivetrain is a 3x7 Shimano Tawny uh, setup with both derailleurs back and front being the Shimano Tawny ones. It does make shifting a bit irritating sometimes on the front derailleur because it doesn't love to shift from 2 to 3, but other than that, it's pretty good most of the time. I haven't really run into any actual shifting problems other than that, and the range makes uphills kind of tor tolerable. Downhills too are pretty good because you can always pedal without you losing any power through the cranks. The 3 by at the front did come with a guard, but I took it off because it looked quite bulky and unprofessional. As you can see, even on these trails, it makes it pretty easy for me to zip through, even at a high speed I can continue to pedal, which I feel like is a really good positive. The flat pedals that come included are actually quite good, however I can see that the pins are starting to wear down a little bit, so an upgrade to a decent alloy pair would be quite a good idea. But for what comes in the box, I'm actually pleasantly surprised. You do also get easy trigger shifters, both branded Shimano, that work pretty well and are fast and snappy. The trigger shift makes it quite easy to shift through and to this day, I haven't had any problems with them at all. They are both integrated though, the gears and the brakes, so making upgrades on either one might be a little bit more difficult, but it shouldn't be anything too hard for you. The stem is pretty long, but it's not in any way unusable. 720mm wide bars are pretty good, and the grips, they're not lock-on, 
but they're pretty plush and I can use them without gloves, which is a major up point. They have been quite resistant to scratching because I've thrown this bike around a lot and the handlebars basically have no damage. You do see an occasional scuff, but it's pretty good. The handlebars also do make it quite easy to go on a lot of more flowy trails and they give you a lot of control on these trails, which I feel like is a really big positive. Valier does come with bolts for your bottle cage. I don't really use a bottle um, bolt cage, but if you do, they're definitely there. You can use them. Uh, you also get the frame that's made out of an aluminium alloy, and the actual frame is quite light. However, when the wheels are made of steel, it does make the bike a bit heavy. But an upgrade in wheels is probably a really good option for you if you want to make this. A lot more rideable. The C class was originally fastened with a hex bolt. I upgraded it to a quick release for a quick change out in the boots on trails. I also upgraded the seat and seat post to a mongoose velo seat because it was a lot more comfortable than the original. The original was an Apollo branded seat that was quite thin and on longer rides it could start to hurt. The new upgrade is good and you can find yourself quite a cheap, good upgrade. So it's not really a big issue, you can sort it out for about £10. I know this seat's seen being through quite a lot of damage, it did come off my old bike, so that's why it's still like this. The, uh, you also do get more auto cage mounts if you need that on the bottom. I wouldn't really recommend this for off-roading, but if you're just commuting on this bike, it's pretty good. I also upgraded the little um, headset and the top cap because the old one didn't look that good. I think they were Neko branded originally, but this new upgrade is a lot smoother and I quite like it. Uh, the forks are pretty nice. They have a prelude adjustment Prelude, preload adjustment and 80 millimeters of travel, which is pretty much a minimum for off road cycling. The forks are branded Apollo, but upon further inspection, you do realize that they're uh, made by a brand called Zoom. A lot of people have a lot of negative opinions about the brand Zoom, but I haven't really had any issues with them so far. The suspension is quite plush. And the only issue that I've had with it so far is that it makes a little bit of noise, but to this day I've never bottomed out. Sometimes it can get stuck in the middle, but only while you're going on road. Off road I've never ever had an issue with it, so I don't think it's anything to be concerned about. The stanchions are a bit on the thin side, but it seems to be fine. All in all, this bike is pretty good for the price I bought out. For 150 you're not going to get a better bike. This is probably the best you'll get brand new. If you do want to look into used bikes, it's definitely an option, but you know, who doesn't like a new bike? Right now it's off the 240, and for other options on brand new bikes, I think the 240, this is still quite a good option. But I would try and check out on the website if it ever comes in a little bit cheaper, down to that 150 price point again. Um, all in all, thank you so much for watching. This was MTB Junkie. Don't forget to hit that beautiful subscribe button. Turn on the bell so you get notifications for my new videos. Like this video, comment down below, share it to everybody. You know, I really want to gain some more following on this channel and more views and fun next time on my next video. That's me, over and out.